Hi, today we're going to look at building a K2 process that utilizes InfoPath and Smart Objects. To start off with, we're going to build a Smart Object. For our particular example, we're going to do a Leave Request process. So we're going to create a Leave Request Smart Object. We're going to use the Smart Box service so that a SQL table was created for us by K2. So we, all we need to do is just add some properties. So we'll add a couple of properties. We need an ID, which will be an auto number. We'll add that we need to get the full name of the person. We want the description of the leave. We want the leave type. We want the start date, which will be date time. Want the end date. Also be date time. And then we also want to capture the status and the process instance ID. Should be a number. Go ahead and click OK there. And that's our smart object. Let's go ahead and deploy that. Once the smart object has been deployed, we'll minimize K2 Studio, and we're going to go in and use InfoPath to create our form. I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank form, and save this as to our desktop as our lead request form. We'll create a main view for the submission. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and save this form. Let's create another view, actually. We'll create a view for manager approval. And let's actually rename this view as submit. And this will be Okay, so we'll save our form at this point. Now what we want to do is be able to bring the smart object data that's coming from that smart object that we created into this form, rather than storing the information directly within the XML within the, within the InfoPath form. The reason for doing it with smart objects is so that this, the data is stored in a separate system, which makes it easier for reporting and also easier uh, to control the security of the data as well. Uh, information that's stored within the direct XML is not easily secured and is also not very easy to report on. So we'll go ahead and close InfoPath at this point. We'll go to our form and we'll right click and say integrate with smart object. We we'll go ahead and click add to add our methods. We'll select this lead request smart object. We want to be able to create a new line item and also load up our leave request data. Click finish and that will add the data sources to the InfoPath form. Then we can go back into the design of the form and we'll see that we have two additional data sources available to us. If we go back to our submit view, in our submit view we we're going to want to be able to load up or actually create and pass parameters into a create method to create our leave request uh, leave request data. Uh, to do that, let's go ahead and just add a, a table. And then on the in the table, we want to capture the full name, the description of the leave request, the leave type, the start date. And the end date. Those. So that will capture data, and then we will need to call the create method when the form is submitted in order to pass this data into SQL. But we'll do that a little bit later. Let's go back to our manager approval view, and in the manager approval view, we actually need the load method because the information will already be in SQL. We need to load that data in. The query fields are the input parameters of the method, and the data fields are the return. So when we're going to do a load, we pass an ID into the form, a 
or into the method, and the data fields return the data that's stored in the system. Uh, so this is where we'll get that data. So let's go ahead and add a table here as well. And we'll surface the same information here. So we'll show the full name, the description, the leave type, start date and end date. The other thing that we'll need on the manager approval view is an ability for the manager to take a specific action, whether that be approve or decline or whatever. So we'll go back to the main data source and we'll add a new field called the manager action. And we will put that manager action field on the form. The other thing we'll also need in the main data source is the ID of the leave request. Which we'll capture there. At this point, we'll go ahead and create one more view. I'm going to create a what I call a read-only view. For the purposes of uploading a form, a read-only version of the form, uh, into SharePoint. So we'll call this the leave request details and we'll fill it out in the same way. Okay, at this point we'll go ahead and save our form and close out of InfoPath. Go to back to K2 Studio and add our process. I'm going to add a new process of leave request I'm going to go ahead and create it as a blank process, and then we'll add the InfoPath integration to that process. Go to the process wizard, grab InfoPath integration, drag it on. We need to point to our existing form, which is on our desktop. And then where we want to deploy the form to is SharePoint. We'll browse. I happen to have a leave request form library already created, but you could always create a new one. We'll select the web browser option to show inform services. See our smart object methods are reflected there. Click finish. On the next page, we will select to start the info uh, start the process using the infopath form submit view and click finish. Now we're going to go ahead and add our manager approval client event. So we'll assign a, a task to the manager for approval. We don't want to use the submit view. We'd rather use the manager approval view. And we will go ahead and surface in the InfoPath form that manager action and select that as being the task action field. When we click Next, it will ask us if we want that action field to be turned into a drop-down to dynamically show the actions at runtime. We'll say yes. Configure our notification. Configure the actions that we want available for this manager. We'll have approve and decline options. We will also need to specify who we want to assign the task to. And for our purposes, we'll use the manager of the originator uh, looking at Active Directory. We'll wire this up and create two placeholder events for approved and declined. At this point, we'll need to go back into the InfoPath form to wire up some of the data connections uh, that we didn't do when we were first in that InfoPath form. So we'll go to the process section, go to the InfoPath forms wizard. What you'll notice is that the current location of the InfoPath form that's associated to the process is no longer on the desktop. It's in the project directory uh, and has been copied over there. This is the form that will be deployed when the process is deployed. Uh, rather than the one on the desktop. So this is a copy and this is the one that's used uh, by K2. We'll click the design button which will take us directly into InfoPath in design mode. And we need to do a couple of things uh, with our with our rules. Uh, so we need to go to look at our rules. 
the first thing we'll need to do is when we submit the form in the first place, we need to take these this information that we're capturing and pass it back to SQL by calling the uh, by calling the create method. So if we go to the submit form rules, we'll see that there are two rules set up, one that sets the task action in the case that the document view is equal to manager approval, and one that actually submits the workflow back to K2. We need to add a new rule, a new action, and we will call this create leave request. We will need to set a rule because we don't want it to create a, uh, a new leave request each time the form is submitted, but only when the manager view or the document view is equal to submit. Under the in the underscore K2 section that's been added, there's a document view field. And we just set or check the C that that is equal to submit. If it's equal to submit, then it is the initialization view, and we will perform the action of querying the create method pass the data back to SQL, and then we'll need to add another action to set a field's value. We need to save the ID back into our leave ID in the main data source, and we'll, so we're setting the field leave ID with the value that is returned from our secondary create data source in the return values. That will save that data field. In the form load, if we think about now the manager approval view and also the read-only view, these need to retrieve data when the form is loaded. So if we go back and look at the form load rules, we will need to add a new rule or a new action to load the leave request. We will also need to set a condition using the same document view, but we're going to say when it's not equal to submit. So anytime the form is loaded and the view is not equal to submit, we need to do two things. We need to set a field's value. The field that we need to set in this case is the load input parameter of ID with the value that's coming from our leave ID form. After we do that, we can then query the load method to load the values. We also want to move this down a bit so that the switch views have all taken place before we go and try to load the leave request. At this point, the form is ready. We can save the form and we can close the form. So will take us back to K2 Studio, tell us that it's been updated successfully. We can click OK and click Finish.